I'm sitting in a Tesla Model S P100D, that's the fast one. And I'm gonna try out one of the newest features for Model S. It's a little something called Navigate on Autopilot. So if you're here in the Autopilot menu on the main screen, just activate it, car must be in park to enable, enabled. Now here's a bunch of text. I could read this to you, but all you need to know, it's in beta, autopilot will not stop on its own stop lights. I'll synopsize. Basically what happens is that you put your own destination into the navigation system, and then from on-ramp to off-ramp, as it's been described to me, the Model S will take care of itself. So it'll do things like merge with traffic, decide which lane you need to be in, uh, it'll handle interchanges. So the Model S will navigate on autopilot in two ways. One, it'll make sure you're in the right lane so that you get to your destination. And two, it can also make lane changes to get around slower traffic. And there are four settings. You can disable that. You can have it mild, average, or my favorite, Mad Max, meaning it will aggressively look at adjacent lanes, see if they're going any faster, and then they'll move you over, obviously safely. We're just going to leave that on Mad Max. Put the mic away. Let's go ahead and uh, navigate our way to the Long Beach Airport. My favorite airport. Oh good, and it's gonna take us on a freeway. That's perfect. Navigating to the Long Beach Airport. Navigate on autopilot. So if this works correctly, it should be able to, once I get onto the on-ramp to the 605 South, merge me with traffic, put me in the correct lane to merge onto the 405 North, exit on Lakewood, and then it'll hand control back to me. And obviously you can't just like be hands off. You have to have a hand on the wheel and you should be paying attention because you have a lot to live for just like I do. Can I tell you a story uh, from being a father? Last night we were driving home from Santa Monica and I was pointing out to my three and a half year old daughter that the vehicle was steering itself. And she said, good job steering wheel, you're independent. If you don't have a child or my child that, may, that might not matter to you, but I thought it was super adorable. She was very proud of the steering wheel, and I was too. So once I get on the on-ramp, I'm gonna pull the uh, autopilot stock back here, and then the, the system should be active. The merging thing is what I'm looking forward to because merging with traffic is something humans do terribly. They never know when to accelerate or decelerate, and things always get buck wild. So I'm gonna wait for the little um, indicator in the gauge cluster. There it is. Please keep hands on wheel. Got it set for a max of 65. Maybe I'll crank that up a touch. I am not steering right now. My hands are on the wheel. Confirm lane change, sure. So the way it works, oh God. <laughs> okay, we successfully merged. The way it works is that it asks you if you want to um, make a lane change. Okay, we well need to move over a lane. Oh, it's asking for one more, okay. Okay, there's a blue line in the gauge cluster right here, and it tells me where the vehicle is intending to drive, and it'll give you instructions. Okay, I'd like to move over one lane. Confirm you're ready to do that lane change with the turn stock. So you just give it a quick tap, and then the vehicle will turn itself into that lane. Obviously using all of its sensors to detect whether there's traffic around, around it. So it's doing something right now that I wouldn't do, which is cruising in the left-hand lane. Speed limit is 65. I have the uh, cruise control set for something like that. What's neat is that in the cluster here, you can see the vehicles that are positioned around you, which is very reassuring knowing that the car sees what you see. At the same time, I wish there was an option in there for I don't feel like blocking traffic by driving in the left lane. There should be a German setting, Deutschland mode, where you're never in the left lane unless you're passing. That would be my suggestion. Trying to complete maneuver, be prepared to assist. Okay, I am prepared to assist. I'm getting instructions in the gauge cluster that it would like me to turn one more lane over to the right. I have done that. The way it makes those lane changes feels a little like a student driver. Okay, I'm gonna I'm sort of steering. Okay. It's a little tentative rather than uh, a human that observes, decides, yes, I'm doing it, and then does it. That said, once you get used to how it operates, you kind of just get into the flow of, I guess it's just doing, oh, there's a Hellcat in front of me. Sweet. Now I'm on the interchange to the 405 North, following that sweet Hellcat up there. Again, my hand is on the steering wheel uh, in case I need to intervene, but I'm not steering. This is gonna be the dicey part, is merging with the, the traffic on the 405. 
Let's see how the Model S using its Navigate on autopilot mode deals. Looks like it's a pretty clear lane merging moment. Confirm lane change, okay. Trying to complete maneuver. So now there's a merging lane here and then it is, it kind of stayed in that merging lane. Whoa, it's confused. It's braking right now. Uh, and so it's like uh, slowing down traffic behind me. And it's trying to move over a lane even though, and now uh, this is awkward. There's a, a truck that's flashing its lights at me and now I'm accelerating. It looks like I'm trying to stop the truck from going around me. Oh God, this is getting so awkward. Oh. <laughs> it was trying to find space to move over a lane because there was a lot of traffic there. And so in its eagerness to move over a lane, it just decided to slow down in this lane, making the person behind me in that Nissan Titan think I was a colossal jerk. Maybe I was for not intervening. Now, so this is interesting. I know Lakewood Boulevard is coming up in about a, a mile and a quarter, but it's asking me to move over one more lane. I'm gonna deny that one. I think maybe the lesson here is that if left to its druthers, the Tesla Model S utilizing Navigate on autopilot would make some decisions I wouldn't make as a courteous driver. Maybe it's the fact that I'm on Mad Max mode. That might be part of it. Although if I was on Mad Max mode and it was trying to make the best time possible, it would have used all that space in front of me instead of slowing down to anger the Nissan Titan behind me. Ah, and now it wants to move over a lane. So I've confirmed I will move over a lane. It's braking suddenly and squeezing over. Driving is extremely complicated and to do so with finesse and with a thoughtful attitude towards your fellow drivers takes almost human levels of intelligence. That said, it is kind of remarkable that I've made my way as far as I have. So we're coming up to the Lakewood Boulevard exit. I'm guessing it's gonna ask me for one more lane change to the right. I am confirming I will do that now. I have confirmed that. It's a little confused because there was a merging lane. Okay, we are in the correct lane. Navigate on autopilot unavailable in 400, 300, 200, 175, and it is off. Now it's just regular autopilot. I'm gonna take over control here, tap the brake. Went through the range of emotions. Delight, I don't say, not terror, not terror, just confusion. Is angering a Nissan Titan driver an emotion? <laughs> it was for me. I think we experienced some challenges there, especially since it was such a short stint, but I think what's cool about Navigate on autopilot is that it's not limited to specific roadways. If you're on any freeway, the Model S will do its best to guide you. Unlike Super Cruise from Cadillac, where you um, have certain corridors where you can make use of it, this is a much more flexible system. Not a perfect system, but pretty neat technology. And as it develops, it's only gonna get better. I feel like I have to go get an edible arrangement to make apologies for that uh, Titan driver. Ah, good, road rage. This guy. <laughs> I don't know if you could see that on camera, but that was fun. The guy driving the Subaru Legacy felt slighted because a vehicle pulled in front of him. And as retaliation for that unsafe maneuver, he unsafely drove around, pulled in front and slammed on his brakes. <laughs> Maybe we should let the cars drive themselves.